everybody. Welcome to our favorites. We are working favorites. through each of our personal top ten favorite movies of <laughs> all time. We've recently covered mine. Now we're on to... The good list. <laughs> yeah, mine's a good list. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> we're, now we're on to... I, let's, I, I can't crap talk any of these movies. They're all fantastic. But this one is Jake's... Number eight. Number eight. Jake... What is your number eight favorite movie of all time? That's definitely not in the Guess title one. of this. <laughs> you want to uh, uh, tell our audio, audio listeners? Oh, uh, I suppose I could. Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship. The first one. Of the ring. The very first one. And that's a very... I feel like the... You want to know a very interesting thing that I feel like I've noticed? A lot more recently, a lot of people have been loving the second one more. Yeah. I feel like that's a big, big turn. I haven't, because, like, it it's is. funny because it's kind of a mess. I don't know if I'd call it a It's me- the messy middle. It's, it, they the, had best way, it's the best way to tell an impossible story that yep. still ends up kind of being a mess. The extended version kind of fixes mm-hmm. it, but. Eh. It's been a while since I've seen the second one, so I'd have to rewatch that, but yeah. we're watching the first Yeah, for one. context, Dickie. Watch the Fellowship Extended. Yes, Jake I did. watched Fellowship and Two Towers Extended, and I watched all three Extended. So all of us <laughs> watched a different number of them, <laughs> but we all great. saw we all this first one. Hey, who watched The Hobbit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. When, when did we Crickets. get Cricket in here? Crickets. Crickets. Yeah. Oh, Jake, please tell us why is this movie? I love this movie, movie guys. Um, I got to be honest. It came out in 2001, right? Mm-hmm. What was I like, sixteen? I think or something you like just that? turned thirteen or fourteen, maybe fifteen. What year were you born? December. It yeah, like Christmas. And so, he's born eighty six. Fifteen. Yeah. He so, just turned so 15. I show up to this movie theater with my dad, and um, <laughs> when I was growing up, my dad read me. He, he always used to read me the classic novels. Like uh, we read a lot of the great illustrated classic type book things. One, but one of the ones you read me was The Hobbit. Nice. So I was aware of this sort of like Middle Earth thing, and I, but I didn't. But I hadn't. We hadn't read this, so I didn't know this. But he had read it before, so he knew it. Okay. And it's just been always been one of my favorite memories going with him to see that and being like, "Hold on a second, they didn't finish the story. What? What? What is this? Where's it going? Because I- 2001, I'm gonna say, wasn't really like. We don't have news about movie. Didn't have news about movies the way that we do today. That's what Jake. I was going to ask you this question as somebody who's seen it because I've never seen it in the theaters like that. Did they market it as the first part to a trilogy or was it just a movie? I I mean I don't. Okay, there's two halves to this. I was a freshman in high school. Potentially, they did not. Or to me, they did not. Or I didn't see any of it. Okay. If I looked at it as an adult, I'm sure I could find marketing that was, this is a trilogy. Mm -hmm. But suffice to say, uh, this might have also been one of the first DVDs I ever bought, too. Um, And so it became my tradition. I, I, (laughs) I am a person who loves Christmas, and so on Christmas Eve, as a kid, I could never sleep. I would wake up in the middle of the night... And turn this on nice. to get closer. Bide to, the time yes. until I could get up <laughs> and go wake my parents up. Nice. And yes, that was when I was fifteen and sixteen. I would, uh, if I were not thirty-six or thirty-seven, whatever I am. <laughs> You're thirty-six. I'm thirty-six. Okay, thank you. There you go. Um, I would probably still do that if I could, except for that now I'm just genuinely tired. I feel that, yeah. It's um, funny you say you watch it at Christmas time, though, because this always is like a fall movie for me. It just has that vibe. A lot of leaves. Yeah, a lot of leaves and just like the... The, <laughs> the leaves of La Florian do not fall idly. I know that's one. from the second <laughs> one. I get that. <laughs> I still like it. <laughs> um, also, I'm a I'm just a big setup guy. I love a good setup to a story. I'm not so much about the payoff. So you're a beginnings person. Yeah. I am an endings person. That <laughs> means Dickie likes the middle, which means he's the meat in our sandwich. You. I will always be I don't meat. like that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> someone's got to right now. He's got to switch me between you guys. <laughs> Ugh. 
I don't know why I keep weird. doing that. I invited that. <laughs> you absolutely invited I'm not going to tell the audio listeners what we just did. We they went, went oogie, 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 oogie with we, its fingers. Yeah, we, we wiggled our fingers together. Oh, I can feel it. Did he feel it was greasy? A little bit. Right. <laughs> I thought you washed your hands so they weren't sticky. I did, but his mm. were... Well, sorry. I mean, his girlfriend's been gone. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are my palms hairy? No, but mine are. <laughs> Back to the movie. Yes. <laughs> I just love this movie. Everything in it is so good. Um, this is actually the first time I've watched the extended editions. And let me tell you, Ever. it adds a lot. lot. And It's like 40 or 50 minutes. It just so... I am honestly going to say that this is, in my mind, the last great movie trilogy ever made. Well, it's because uh, I I was talking about this with a friend the other day. Yeah, I'll start with this. Nothing's a trilogy anymore because there's so many sequels to everything now. Mm -hmm. So, like, because we're like, what great trilogies have come after this? It's like everything we kept coming up with were like, because it's like, well, you got the Star Wars sequel trilogy, which is a mess. And, and... and there are to a certain point, not, not to a like certain this. point, the prequel trilogy because this would have been right About around the same the time. Line. In the middle, yeah. Uh, Phantom Menace was two years before, and Attack of the Clones was the, like six months later. Yeah, this was like two thousand one, two something like that. Uh, uh, two thousand one to two thousand three. How space apart? Yeah. There was just two one years. year. It's one every year each. Oh, because year they each. filmed them all. They all right. came out on or around my birthday. Yeah, it was December releases for all three. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so. this really is like the last like. Even the Hobbit ones came out around my birthday. And those yep. certainly aren't the last great trilogy of, of no. life. Yeah, that's. But there are like, Kung Fu Panda and Honey Train of Dragon are good trilogies. They don't compare, but to they're this. not it's compared not to nothing. like those are the only two I could come up with when I was we we're going through this. It's like, what other what other trilogies post Lord of the Rings? The Hangover trilogy, Madagascar. <laughs> I mean, that's not even really now a trilogy four. anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Trolls is going to be a trilogy. As that, of recording this right now, it's um, not at a that trilogy. Time, I'm sorry, sir. Shrek. It, it, it's called the trilogy. Dicky, well, get were out. You, were you saying Shrek? <laughs> There's yeah. four at the time. At the time. At what time? Well, the, well at the point where the throne, the throne is, it wasn't even. This that was the good. same year as the first first Shrek movie. Yeah. Yeah. So, for a long time, Shrek would be a trilogy after that, and then they came out with the fourth. Right, I don't. Yeah, like remember. I don't remember if it was. They're all three years a... apart, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but again, you can't um, think of anything on so this. Despicable Me. I wonder why. Even that is Minions. Because for... Minions has its own thing. Yeah, it's yeah. part of this. But the point being, people... this might be the best trilogy of all time. Yeah. Why don't? Why don't you? I, I don't want to get into like too much of an off conversation, but it's just curious as to like truly. I. It's such a cool idea to tell a story like in three different movies. Actually, I don't know why. No. That hasn't been done that because often. Because they keep... No, they do it, and then they keep going. Because I, it makes money. Yeah. I think that Back to the Future could be better than this. I don't think so. Really? And I really like Back to the Future. I like all three movies. I don't think it's as good as Lord of the Rings. I'd have to think about that a little bit. I'd have to rewatch them, too, because I have not seen Back to the Future in a long time. You good? Just sneezing. We're good. So uh, this uh, this could probably be the e- easily because there the only, I think other good trilogies are like the Three Colors trilogy, or Kieslowski Internal Affairs ones, trilogy, which I've not seen the second third one. I've only seen the first one. I know the Three Colors trilogy is up there always, and then the Before oh, well, trilogy. I was, I was about to say I know yeah. a lot of people like is the really trilogy. good, but this is better. Yeah, as much they're as very I love different before. things though. That's the hard part. Funny well, enough, I, the Before trilogy, the first movie takes place. On the day I was born. Another thing that happens on the day I was born. Everyone is more focused on other things than me. Well, I mean, Checks your out. parents are basically never around on your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> they went to, they straight up went to Mexico this year. Yeah. Abandoned me on my birthday. Anyway. Actually, at the specific time you were born. Well, within 10 minutes. Yeah, within 10 minutes. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, um... I have an interesting question. Okay. What's that? Question? What do we think is better, this or the original Star Wars trilogy? This. I yeah. have more this. of a connection with the first Star Wars movie because I just watched. Yeah, you grew up. You saw these years later. Yeah, I just watched it more. I have more of a connection. But I think when I look at the um, the technical filming, one, the camera movements, in this is just it's just better. It is. There's just no there's no way around it. Like 
they took that helicopter and flew that thing everywhere. Like this thing, like like the, like the constant moving, the framing, like all that kind of stuff, is is. I think it makes these move a lot faster than the original Star Wars trilogy. However, I will say. This did not hit at the time like Star Wars hit at the time. That's also true. So I mean, and it, it was pretty close, but it also. I don't know. I don't want to cut you off. Were you going to say anything? I, I think that if there's two minim, or if there's two or three moments that cinema has just changed around, it would be the Star Wars trilogy, the Godfather trilogy, and Cool World. <laughs> no, no, Cool as Ice. <laughs> end of this and i think that this probably was the last well except me so i would like to say that this is the last moment that cinema changed around but then you have the avengers which was a big i would consider the, the avengers dark Knight. as well yeah i don't yeah that, okay everything changed for that i for still that don't i still movie. don't think that's as good in fact the more i think about it the less i like it as a trilogy yeah, that's the other thing. We were well, listing trilogies, and every trilogy. time we listed a trilogy, other than Lord that. of the Rings, it's like, yeah, the third movie's the weakest one. They can't nail the ending. Whereas this one, it's the opposite of that. They have, like, one of the best endings to but, a story but ever. But to be oh, fair, yeah. like, The Dark Knight is much less subject to telling, a, like, a whole story. Yeah, they are also, their own for, things. And each. don't forget, though, this trilogy is based off of pre-existing material. So I think so is ma- the Dark Knight trilogy. Kind of, not really. Yes. Like, yeah. but but they it, didn't it draw is. it from very sp- like like there wasn't one story they were adapting. They were the Dark true. Knight Rises was adapted from Nightfall, directly. Oh, it was. I actually um, did not know that. I Batman thought Batman Begins is just well, a straight up origin story. Yeah, I don't know what that's adapt like if it's directly adapted from anything. I wonder how much of like year one they put into that. That's what I was thinking. Well, year that, that's one. What I thought they, year one and like. Maybe the long Halloween a little bit. Well, that's what I mean, I'm saying. The like, newer Batman least... movies, the long Halloween more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They at least drew from a couple different sources, though. Like, yeah, this the point one... being, it, it was pre-existing. Yeah, but they drew from a couple different sources. This one was just, they were adapting these books into these movies. And, and speaking... I think that helps a little bit. And speaking of adapting, I think this is the best uh, book-to-vision oh. adaptation. Because... 100%. Look, so we watched the... Uh, extended editions. If I haven't already said that, we watched the extended editions. My first time watching the extended editions, though I've had them for like eight years or something like that. Um, so, I... How do I put this? I have read the books. I have seen the movies. These extended editions do a good job of capturing the spirit of the books and giving context to things. The fact that they were able to cut it out or cut out the stuff that's added here and still have the best book adaptations I've ever seen is a testament to Peter Jackson's storytelling ability because they cut all that stuff out and they maintain the pacing and they maintain who the characters are. Peter I'll- Jackson, Fran Walsh, and Philippa Boyens, to give credit to all three worked on, uh, wrote all three movies. They work with him a lot on stuff. Just so it was the three of them breaking okay. it down. I did not know that, so thank you. Yeah, oh, could you imagine doing this by yourself? I for a long time I thought that he did. Which it's still a feat with three people because this is so big, it's so dense. It's but that but that's the thing I find with book adaptations is that the primary sin is not like oh they did this in the book and you didn't do this. Mm-hmm. It's when they change characters. Yeah. Like, change the very soul of a character, and they yes. don't do that here. Because I personally, I have always been of the mind where when you watch a book adaptation to a movie, you're not watching what you think the book is. You're watching what the director thinks the book is. So you have to take that into, just just, just keep that in mind as you're watching it. And I think this, I mean, as somebody who has never actually read the Lord of the Rings books, so I can't say as to how faithful of an adaptation they are, but it feels like it's... Yeah, there's, there's a lot more walking in yeah. this book. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. There's he a brings lot up changing characters, and it just made me think there is a change that they made that works a lot better in the movie. Is when Frodo is after he gets stabbed on Weathertop, mm-hmm. it's not Arwen who brings him to yeah. Rivendell in the book, right? I can't remember who it is, but like there's a change that's like for the better. You're right. There's it's a different. It Ar- no, it's not Aragorn. It's a it's an elf from Rivendell, but I don't remember his name. 
but like he's a character we don't really see again that I remember. Like he's not as important as Arwen is to these movies, because Arwen is a lot more in these movies than she is in the books, if I recall. Yeah. So hmm. changing that to her At least was a very a good decision. Lily. <laughs> see that character in the Hobbit doesn't exist. At least Arwen is a real Tolkien character and gave us one of the weirdest healing scenes. Yeah. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, that one's up. Um, yeah, the other thing that they majorly change, or at least don't give any context to in this as opposed to the books, is um, actually at all. They don't really, there's a lot of time frames given in the books. Like, Frodo is like 70 in the books. Like, a lot of time passes between when Bilbo... It was like 17 le- years between when Gandalf no, left, it's like, right? He's like 70 by the time He was like 50-something, I think, when Gandalf comes back. He was like 30 or 40. Yeah, like and a they, lot of time yeah. passes. Interesting. But in like this, the only time they ever give any indication of time is when they walk into Moria and Gandalf goes, <laughs> it's a four-day journey, and they make it through in 20 minutes. <laughs> Like, I, I can like forgive it, stupid stuff like that. Oh, it's just, it's just was, funny. I, so this time well, they ran through it. part of it. He said four days walk, didn't he? They ran. That should remind me. This time watching it, this is such a nitpick. This is such a non-issue. But I, it stuck out. Here we go. <laughs> but it stuck out to me for some reason. So at the very end, when Sam is swimming to Frodo... And he's like sinking. If he says that underwater scene needs more green in it, I'm going to jump across this <laughs> table. Sean asked him to like cut to open you his try foot. To jump across the table. Sean I will get him cut open his foot over to you. <laughs> anyway, Do you know that? He what? Sean asked him to cut open his foot Did filming really? that. They didn't use that take, but they have the take. In oh the, in, if you watch the appendices, which are in these... Uh, in these uh, extended mm-hmm. physical releases, uh, you see the clipper. He just stops. He stepped on something sharp, and it oh. cut through his hobbit foot. Yeah, what? No, the, were those hobbit was... foot like straight rubber, like sole yeah. type things? Yep. Well, the, the thing I was, I was gonna say was that when he when the camera moves underwater and you see him like like swimming, like it falling down, falling down, falling down. It like the the as the the, the shot was so long, it made me feel like he was a lot further underwater, and then Frodo just casually just reaches down and grabs him i i felt like that like again don't, it's such a nitpick don't get this me wrong there is at all don't don't get me wrong there is some like early 2000s slow motion used in yeah this i was gonna bring that I that's think, like the uh, one thing that takes me out of the movie i think they use uh, it so much but i think a lot of it is used to hide a lot of yeah, a probably. lot of stuff because like that's one thing i noticed watching these two like they were very clearly made with lesser clarity in mind yeah and the more that we the further that we go with like from vhs to i don't even know if they made a vhs release of this i would they believe did. that they did they have uh, a vhs of the extended to vhs to dvd to blu-ray to 4k to 8k or whatever is next um it just the the clarity i think kind of wrecks these old movies because you see all of the flaws in the sharpness. Like, there's mm-hmm. there's a lot of things, like... Um, For me, to... the bell, the bell rock, it, it looked good, but I don't know if it was something on this video. I'm just like, that see, my just brain, looks... My oh. brain lets that go because I know it's not real. It's not yeah. made to look real. Yeah. I'm thinking more of, like, in the scene where the crows come after them... Um, when they're teaching Mary and Pippin how to fight, mm-hmm. um, that structure you can tell is not there, but it's it, it, but it doesn't really look like it should be there. It doesn't look like a set. Mm-hmm. It looks very composited into it. Yeah, but really, but quick, I couldn't tell that or from the original theatrical, like watching it on a DVD. And, so. and, and speaking of the, the look of it, and I think this is part of the reason as to why. It, the, I, I had issues with The Hobbit, and I have some issues with the new... Um, did you guys ever watch the Lord of the Rings series, by any chance? No. I got three episodes into it and was like, eh, this is too much right now. Yeah. So, like, the, a couple of the issues that I have with those, that I, th- when I compare it to, like, these movies, is this feels just... I don't know if it's because they use, like, actual film to film it. I don't know if it... If they, they might have. It's oh, the, 2001. I, I bet they actually did. Or but 99, it, probably, when they were filming it. But, like, it just, it feels more, uh, quote-unquote, lived in. It feels more real 
where the newer ones just felt like too clean and too digital. It felt like a video game. Yeah. Where I, this one, it just, it feels, and it's crazy to me because you have these like crazy sweeping helicopter shots, like especially when they're like going through the orcs and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and that and that, that should feel like, well, it does feel unnatural, but but it feels so right though because just the way that it, the the film look has and the, because the color it, palette they use. Well, because it's in our world, mm-hmm. Hobbit, not so much. Yeah, yeah, they Maybe actually a little, but that's the other thing is they probably and, I, and I'm sure they went they had sets. And for other stuff, like for The Hobbit or for The oh, Rings yeah. of Power. But, know. like, this one, you can tell they just went to a corner of New Zealand and here we go. I mean, there is a little bit of, like, so Rivendell looks like a painting. And I think mm-hmm. intentionally so. Yeah. Uh, you can tell that that's not something that is of our world. And, like, The Rings of Power, from what I saw of it, is mostly an elf sort of story or mostly a more... Lord of the Rings is like the world in ruins from that, right? Yes. Because that's before the Great War. Um, yes. But you're right. One of the things I love about this is that it just feels so lived in. Mm-hmm. Um, it just feels dirty. It feels real. And it's so clearly not. But it it, it just... It, I think it's just, it's just another testament to Peter Jackson. It's just like... I would, I, I think I, I don't mention it while the cameras were rolling, but this is a three, you know, 40... Three hour, forty minute movie. It flies by, mm-hmm. and I think it's just because of the. The only reason I notice the time is because it makes me get up to change a disc. Which <laughs> let's let's talk about yeah. that a second. A standard Blu-ray right now is about 50, 50 gigs ish on the low end. I think on the like the consumer end. How do they not get this on a fifty gig disc? I have no idea. Unless they just refuse to compress any of it. That's what I'm wondering. If they just like did a lossless scan of the film and just said go for it, like, or I'd just be... did a straight up transfer of the DVDs. To... <laughs> like, I'd be so so curious to see like this, just the kind of like how they transfer that the technology behind that. That'd be really really interesting to see how they transferred it over. I was gonna say on the uh, back to the the editing, like the slow mo. This. It, it's weird. It's kind of two things at once that I was thinking of watching. It feels like a 90s movie, like a late 90s movie, but also ushered in the new millennium in filmmaking. It kind of mm-hmm. does both because this kind of feels like it belongs in the 90s because it was shot in the I think they mm-hmm. started filming in 98. Really? Yeah, I think. That sounds, that I mean, if it came out in 01, they definitely started like And they're coming out year to year. I think they just did a couple reshoot things. You know what I would love to read about that, mm-hmm. I, sh- that I have never, that I should? How the contract worked for someone... Okay, so, yeah, Boromir, right? Did he sign a three-movie deal? Did they get one giant sum for all of this? Because, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen The Lord of the Rings in 22 years, <laughs> um, he's in the first movie. Sean Bean, you're talking Sean about. Sean Bean, yes. Boromir, yeah. Did I not say Boromir? You said, you Boromir. said Boromir. I just... Sean Bean. We're talking he's Sean Bean. in the first movie. He's not in the theatrical second or third at all, right? Yeah. I haven't seen the theatrical right? version, so I can't speak to that. He is in the extended versions of both of those two. If I remember not correctly. Not the third one. Not the third one? Just the second Just one. Just the second one. He's in the... Yes. It's been a second since no, I saw Two wait, Towers. Wait, wait. Did... See, that's one scene I don't remember. In Return of the King, you've I you've not think. watched the extended, I've not but, watched it, but I can't I, remember. I've seen scenes. Actually, I think it is in the theatrical. Remember when Denethor looks at Faramir and he smiles and he thinks he sees Boromir walking behind him? Yeah. So he's in one shot of Return of the King. Okay, that, that is not the shot I was thinking about. Which it about, looked but... like they put him in digitally so he didn't have to come back for refilling. But, I but they did. They still used his likeness. Yeah, yeah I'm still saying. still pay him for yeah, it. I'm yeah. saying he did come back for reshoots to do the Osgiliath flashback in Two Towers. That what they did do reshoot for that. Which they had to bring him I back. I wish they would have kept in the theatrical release. Yeah. That would have made that movie better. That would have been cool to see. You would have understood like <laughs> Faramir. Yeah, because in the theatrical, it's oh he just the ring has to, they, they want the ring to go to Gondor. But when you see the, the backstory of oh this is how his dad treats him. This like, is how he's he's kind of been in Boromir's shadow. Even though you know they they love each other, his bro, you know because they're they're brothers. Mm-hmm. And when you see that that extended flashback it makes you realize oh that's why he's not letting go because he sees it as a weakness in himself or something that his father has pointed out so it makes his reason not letting them go stronger mm-hmm. and i wonder why they cut that other than other than time, time but we're time's already gotta be it. we're already at three hours <laughs> like but like so like 
I don't know, man. It was a different time for movies, too. We get a lot more movies closer to three hours now than we ever did that that, is 22 years ago. Very true. This was this was probably, I don't want to say brand new, because I mean, like, like Titanic was super long, too, and other stuff. That I can't Titanic, remember. I think, was... So I'm not going to say that there weren't any, like, that long of movies beforehand, but I think Titanic was really the big swing towards blockbusters starting to be that long. That yeah. sounds about right. Because you have your you have your outliers in movie history that are longer. But because Gone with the Wind's four hours. Yeah, but yeah. then you got stuff like, like well, that. I mean, and like ben Dr. Hurt, Zhivago, Dr. And Zhivago, Lawrence of Arabia. They're all yeah. over three hours, and it's like oh, yeah, you always you always have those outliers, but not the bulk. Now the bulk is everything's two and a half minimum. Well, I mean, and I think Titanic started this swing because you got Titanic, and then you got. Pearl Harbor that is almost as long. Oh, I never actually saw Pearl Harbor. Don't keep it that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> so it, I've heard. I, it's not so even. I've it, it's not even something that I can say. Is it's something that I enjoyed as a child, and now it's not even fun. Yeah, so I've it's heard. just frustrating. <laughs> um, and then you got the two Avatar movies. Yeah, first one's about 160 minutes. Second one's yeah, 190. Like, these came before that, so like it was Titanic, yeah. Pearl Harbor, these. There's, there's got to be more there's that we're not. Thinking. I just feel like the all swing. those Harry Potter movies get longer and longer, get longer until the last ones. I think one of the shortest ones. Okay, split it in two. And more bland and more bland and more bland. Yeah, once you hit like that fourth movie or fifth movie, they all start to become <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, that's a different topic. But that movie series started the same year as Fellowship. It yeah, did. You're it did. right. Yeah, that's why Fellowship was not the highest grossing movie of the year. Because it was, because it was a back when people fell were off the first to support stone. Harry Potter products. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny how things changed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, oh Jake, we uh, we have the this the booklet from the uh, releases. If you're watching on YouTube, I have the uh, DVD release of the extended cut. They have the book like no. spines, and then the I have the DVD the, booklet, and he has the DVD booklet, and then we have the. The Blu-ray box set That's from like that. ten years ago or whatever That's the one gold that I one. Have. Uh, I got that as a Christmas present one year, and I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Yep. So I have. Did that you sit down clip. right away and watch it? Actually, I think the next week because my parents had never seen them, and I'm like, oh, you guys gotta watch these. What See, did they think? Uh, eh. Lord <laughs> of the Rings is it's such not. a weird thing too. It it because oh. it's like okay, um, I ha- my family is very Christian, very conservative has issues with magic like my mom had issues with harry potter because of the magic Same. Same. part of it they love these things yep. so like true. it's not got magic and darkness in it it's not the magic thing because i know it's the same thing with my parents it's the same thing with sam uh she it's a it's a whole sword and sandals fantasy i think fantasy is just it's not, high fantasy it, yeah that is just not for everyone I mean, but we Let's have these here. booklets and they they mark like new scenes and extended scenes we're going to go over some of them, just like the changes from... Because everyone always talks about the movies that talk to death. We want to talk like what some of the changes between the extended and the theatrical. Because I don't know. I've never seen any of the theatrical versions, gotcha. ever. The, so they, they kind of have two starts to the movie. I because Particularly, the, I like the prologue. It's, it's more like the book. The book yeah. is framed in that manner. Yeah, and the prologue is in... The, that's the opening of the theatrical. Okay. But then the concerning hobbits after it were Bilbo starting to write his book and talk explaining the Shire, mm-hmm. it is one of those things like it does kind of feel like a second start to the movie, but it actually lays the groundwork for the hobbits a lot better. You can you can go without it because you watch the theatrical, you're like, okay, yeah, you, you, if you take it at face value. But then when he actually like lays out some of the things, it's like, okay. It also it makes, contains makes one of the one of the better contextual scenes for Bilbo. You know the the meme. Where Bilbo reaches and ha! It, it, there, there is a scene where he loses the ring and he starts to panic. Panic a little bit, and yeah, I mean you know what it is. That's not there That's so in the theatrical. So when that ha- when the when the meme scene happens in the theatrical, it's kind of like I didn't know we were this deep into this. I mean, you're at that point you're sucked into it, so you kind of understand and you just kind of go with it. But this, I think, gives it. More context. Yeah, if you really want to watch the theatrical version, now. if you want to know where the the transition is, the the prologue when it and it ends with Galadriel's speech, mm-hmm. it like crossfades into Frodo sitting under a tree, and the title appears. It goes straight from that to that. There's no Bilbo book at all. 
And that's like five minutes of the movie just cut. Yeah. Because it goes straight. Because that shot of Frodo sitting is barely in the extended. Because you don't need to sit under there for a title to show up. It just shows him get up and run over to Gandalf. Mm-hmm. Huh. I think it's that. I think it like crossfades to him, title, and then it like cuts to Gandalf, and then cuts back to Frodo when he sits. Something like that. Mm. So like that whole it's called concerning hobbits on here, and that that's all added, and it does kind of explain how it's not that the hobbits are dumb. They just they're sheltered. They don't know. They don't ever go anywhere or do anything. So that's why they're just unknowledgeable in a lot of things. So that mm. kind of explains. I was watching a video the other day, like. Why Mary and Pippin act the way they do oh, for this movie movies. compared to the other two? Because they act that way just because they don't know. So, and the big changing moment for them, well, two is Gandalf, Gandalf dying, and Boromir's death mm-hmm. right in front of them. Mm-hmm. Those are like the two things that change. Because after Boromir's death, they and are he, different characters. Even, even up until uh, when the Urukai come and they're trying to get Frodo to come with them under that log. Yeah, they're, like, they're, I don't want to say they're playful about it, but they're, it's not dire to them. Yeah. And then, and then that moment when you see, is it Mary's it's Mary, face he goes, that it's, yeah, he goes, his face leaving. changes. He realizes I, Frodo's oh, not. The, the face acting in this movie is beautiful. And why am I blanking on, um, oh my God. The actor? Yeah, I know who plays Mary and Pippin. Um, it's Billy not Boy. Penny's Billy, Boat. Yeah, yeah. And Dominic oh, Monaghan. Dominic Monaghan, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a Roth. They built a sodding boat. They're like those, like this. And that's the thing I, I remember. I, I didn't remember laughing as much. Like these, they're, they're hilarious. This movie is a yeah. lot funnier than it gets credit for. Okay. It's funny how Billy Boyd, Pippin's the youngest of the four hobbits. Mm-hmm. And Billy Boyd is the oldest oh, of right. all and them. And he's also and the l- shortest, as made very, very clear by the two towers. <laughs> yep, extended. Yeah. Now, I do what? I think they started filming. He was like 18. That's Could you crazy. imagine now he is in a lot of these movies. Could you imagine being 18 years old and having to be in that much so, of a movie? Okay, like, hold on. Okay, I'm going to start with something I enjoyed about it. One of the other things that is in the extended a lot that is not in the theatrical is Sam's relationship with Frodo. And really? I know and I know the joke is Sam and Frodo being shipped. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But in the extended, there's a bunch of scenes where Sam will do something and it'll just be, the camera will just be on Frodo's face and he'll just smile because Sam, because he appreciates Sam being there. And then that goes away and then it comes back at the very end. That is not in the theatrical at all. I and like, watch I'm watching this going, why isn't, like, I get time, but why are we just supposed to assume? That? That's one of the things that. I genuinely think was better about this one. That's um, so interesting. That's also why Frodo leaves the Grey Havens because Sam got married. No, but uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, it could be real for all we know. Didn't Sam even have a kid, too? Two. That's right. Yep. He's got a son and a daughter. With Rosie Cotton. Who has, I think, someone, like, I was looking at, like, how much screen time does she actually have? She has, like... Two a, minutes. Oh, yeah, a minute. <laughs> in three, um, three plus hour long movies, but she then, has three minutes. Um, three minutes, one minute. What else, yeah. what else did I think that about, too? There was another one. You know what I realized, though? For how much of this movie he's in, Frodo does not do a lot. Like, he's not he gets a very active the force. Crap beat out of him. Yes, he does. Like, holy crap. Oh, watching all three, I remember being a kid and getting annoyed at him because he has the worst balance in the world. <laughs> it's a movie thing. And also, it just feels like he's this, like, whiny, whiny guy that's always mm-hmm. just getting hurt and stuff happening. He keeps to- getting stabbed and, like, oh, my God. But then, but then watching it this time, it's like, I'm, I'm with the extended ones and watching them this close, I feel that journey, like, how much this takes out of him carrying that thing and how heavy it is, especially in the last like hour or two of Return of the King when you're mm-hmm. getting to Mordor and it's heavy as ever and there's more stuff in Mordor. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it's a lot harder to get to Mount Doom in the extended cut of the Return of the King. There's there's a lot lot more in there and you I just feel it. it. I want to watch it. I want to I, I wanna go back and I want to go through and watch all these again. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at somebody trying to think of an, see another scene that I know is different. 
is different. Um, like, just I'm trying to think off the top of my head. When you watch all three of them, it kind of all gets lost and everything. But Yeah, that's why I just The console there, Elrond is different. Yeah, it's longer. Yeah. There's a lot more before they get to certain points in the conversation. Oh, 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 um, that was the one I was thinking of, the sword that was broken. I don't yeah. know. I don't know if that's an added one. Really? Or that that's an added one. No, that's that's a much extended. better. What that's I surprising. think in the in the theatrical, it's a weird cut to Aragorn's face as he's reading a book, and he they just kind of goes. Talk and, about it. They, he looks up. Boromir walks up to the sword. It cuts him. He drops him, yeah. and, and then leaves. It, in this, he actually talks to Aragorn for a bit. So and like, there's a little more there. But Aragorn, I don't think Aragorn does not tell him who he is. Mm. So then when you get to the Council of Elrond and Legolas reveals that Aragorn is the heir of Elendil, Boromir's face changes. He goes, Aragorn. Like it's this moment of, what? So I kind of, I, I like how that would, just more Sean Bean, please. I yeah. love Sean Bean Can so Can we get, a, you know, a re-edit of this where Sean Bean is Aragorn? Oh my god. Just, just Honestly, swap Honestly, you think you get AI to do that? AI would absolutely yeah, yeah, be able yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. There, there's a, on the AI though? There's a great story for the making of this where Sean Bean hated, hate, hate, hated getting in helicopters. So for those <laughs> shots where they're walking on the mountains in the snow, mm-hmm. he would walk up there oh my in God. full costume. So the cast would say, we get into the helicopter, and we go up there, and he'd leave super early in the morning. There he is, little speck on the mountain, walking up. Oh, my God. He just, he's That's a, dangerous, that's man. That's crazy to me. But he just he refused to get on that helicopter. They use helicopters so much in this. Okay. I, it looks great. Uh, it looks so... Now you just have a drone do it. And it's just... But. I guess it. you can still get the same effect, but I don't know. You can just... It just looks so good in those old helicopter shots. We talked about the scene where... Uh, before all the crows come by, the something from Dunland or whatever he says, Dooney and they hide Dunland or whatever, and they, and I like one thing they cut, which I was like, well, why? Is when you know Mary and Pippin they, they tackle Boromir, mm-hmm. it cuts to the birds coming, like someone noticing something's coming, like, but in the extended, it shows Aragorn over there, t- pulls him off, and then they flip him on his back. <laughs> It's literally and like... And he does a cool little camera roll with it. Yeah, yeah it's like, that was such a... It's like eight seconds, and they cut it. Like, I wonder if they had a Ronin with them. <laughs> but seriously, though, how did they do stuff like that before? Like, we're so spoiled with camera equipment nowadays. Oh, that, I, I think that's the one thing that's be be- just so impressive for this. That had to be before gimbals, don't you think? This was... Oh, well, it, the steady cams. They had steady oh. cams. But, like, still... Yeah, with just steady the, cams been around since... 70s. Yeah, a long time. It's Indeed. not the same as a gimbal, though. Right. It's actually like it can't better. roll like it. Y- yes, that's well. true. Yeah, like you can actually you, you get more. It's not robotic like a gimbal is. Yes. Yeah. You're, you got I just recently watched the first movie that used Steadicam, uh, Marathon Man. Used really? no first that's... one to come out that used it was Marathon I Man. I think that's Bound a... for Glory was the first one to use it. I think I could be wrong, but that came out after Marathon Man. That's a good fun fact. 76. I didn't know that. I think I could mm-hmm. be wrong. I thought I read that about it. Is but it, yeah, but yes. yeah, I'm, I'm looking at more of these scenes, just trying to remember because you watch all three of them. It's like that all, and this is the one that I have watched the least for the extended. I've seen the other two more because oh. I think for me it's like this one. It's just it's a lot more in between <laughs> stuff, and because le- like the other ones they cut out some important stuff. So, whereas mm-hmm. this one you get most of the important stuff in the theatrical they, cut. <laughs> in my in my remembering of the book. They add something that's very creepy from the book into the exit from Lothorian. The, the hair? Yeah. <laughs> that's If I remember correctly, I don't remember if it's Gimli or if it's yep. Sam, but there's like a love story between Galadriel and one of them. Not like a love story, but like, yeah. Really? Like this weird like crush thing. I don't remember who it's between, uh, though. That's yeah. all I, weird. Yeah, all I know is in this it was... I Gimli think it's didn't Gimli. know. Gimli didn't know, and didn't he? He say like, "I don't. I give. It's a gift enough to gaze upon the beauty that is the Lady of Lorien or something." And she she gave him the hair. Yeah. A lot she gave of, him uh, three. three three looks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that. Lorien, Loth Lorien has a lot more in this movie, in this cut in the movie. I also don't think it needs it though. Doesn't. There's so much added, but. Of them when just they come, kind of sitting when around. they come in the two towers, those are the elves of Lothorian, right? 
Yes. Yes. They're the elves of the wood, I believe. Uh, I'm trying because I know Haldir is in Lothlorien, but also it's Elrond who sends them. So I'm kind of confused on where they came from for sure. Because again, Haldir is in Lothlorien, but then Elrond is a key part of sending them. So I don't. Maybe it's both. Maybe. I don't know, but I know at the end of the two towers, they don't, I never realized how few people were left when they barricaded themselves in the throne room. Mm. Oh, like, yeah, all those elves are all gone. All the elves are dead. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing. I, I Not to talk too much about the two towers, but that's another thing I appreciated about that was um, the forest moving and oh, then well, seeing where they were going. Ah, like, that's, yeah. not in the, that's not, not in, in the theatrical. theatrical at all. Really? So, the so they, they're just yeah. gone. They just run away in the theatrical. You know the, shot, you know the shots going up? over that hill looking down and the orcs are running away. Mm-hmm. They just run away and then Gandalf says the thing about the battle for Helm's Deep is over. The battle for Earth is about to begin. Like, that's... that's They don't show what happens to the orcs and when you watch that, if you read the books, you know. Mm-hmm. Me, not having read the books when I was a kid watching, I was like, but where, did, where, where did they all go? <laughs> the, yeah. Huh. I think you just kind of assume they went back to Saruman. Isengard. Isengard. But take the office to Isengard. <laughs> I thought there was a clip of him of of Orlando Bloom on the set of The Hobbit watching one of those YouTube videos of that and really? laughing. I think it exists. <laughs> or don't forget the icon. Was he yeah. in The Hobbit? Yes, the second, oh, yeah. third one. You, you don't, don't remember, remember him at all? No. That was a whole thing of oh, like, yeah. it's like it's clearly a fan service thing. And no one really wanted it, but I guess it was nice to see him. He's much more of a video game character in that. Because every movie he does yeah. he's something. In a video, he's a video game character in every, every movie. Every movie gets more <laughs> ridiculous. Like like this one, the, the, the little thing is him walking on the snow, they're light or whatever. It's like, that's just a funny little thing. Then the second one, he, like, skateboards down the steps on a shield, shooting see? his arrow, and then launches it. It's funny. It's so and then the weird, third honestly. one, he takes down an ollie font by himself. Then you get to The Hobbit, and he's running up falling rocks oh, like a video yeah. game. It's like, so yeah. funny. You, you say that about the skateboard thing, but it's it's just... You, you it's can't cool. tell me you watch it's it that ass. you're like... Yeah! Yeah! Of course I do. Oh, man. Yeah, that second one, because we, we, we're basically talking about all three... Kind I can't talk much about the third one. Yeah. I, I didn't watch it, but yeah. that's but that second it. one. Is as we said, is a mess because and mo- like the first like two hours of it, I remember thinking like, this is really all over the place, and it's because the way the books are set up yeah. is you tell one whole yeah, the books story are set first, up more parallel, and, then you go back. and you can't do that in a movie. Mm-hmm. Linear. I was trying to think. Par- Told linear. No. I don't know how you would say that. Yeah, cause because you not- go through one story and then you go back and then yeah. go through the story again. Each story is told linear without mm-hmm. cutting back and forth because parallel would be they're the same. You're, that's when you're cutting back and forth. I'm trying to think of what the term would be. I don't know. I don't know if there's a term. Because it is. Because there's ha- there has to be a third part in there too for Marion Pippin. Yeah, they're part of the. Are they? I think so because it's two books. I don't, it's been so long. Each since part I've has read two it. books. It's been it's been a good ten years. Yeah. I just. It's an impossible task, and when you're cutting back and forth, it messes yeah, like, with the pacing in a weird don't, way. Don't hear us wrong. We're not saying that this is bad in any regards. Oh, no, it's, it's just great. kind of a mess. I mean, and yeah. it's people's favorite, and a big reason is, as I've heard, they don't have to worry about all the setup, and it's not over at the end. It's the it's like everything's set up, and we don't have to be sad and say goodbye. It's like all the mi- good middle stuff, and it's like, oh, I'm an endings person, so <laughs> it's and I'm not a beginnings thing. person. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, 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 I, I watch The Return of King probably the most out of all these. Same. Yeah. That's my favorite See, one. See, oh, yeah. I don't like to watch that one because it's so much of a task. It is a big even, task. Even theatrical cut is just like... How long was the theatrical cut for that? 200 yeah. minutes. You want to give me that an hour? Three hours and 20 minutes. And then the extended cut like, has an extra, like, 57 minutes. Yeah, it's almost it's, a five-hour it, Yeah, it's, it's long. It's long, long. And it's funny because... For the longest time, my big thing was, yeah, there's like there's like five endings, and it just mm-hmm. keeps teasing you and teasing you. Then this time, didn't bug me at all. Hmm. You I'm, know, I'm curious to <laughs> your reaction to it when you watch it, because I know you're going to watch it. I, I, I will tell you, I will tell you my experience from watching the theatrical one in the theater, though, right? <laughs> yes, actually. Where did I see that? One? I would love to watch. Probably it see it with my dad. Probably. You know what we should do? We should rent out 
a uh, theater at our local movie theater and watch all three extended editions on the big screen. Oh, in man. one sitting. That would, that's that's I tr- so listen. Long. I tried to do that. L- I have listen, done. bro. I listen, bro. College, it's a it's a it's a feat. You just you gotta got get it. up every change of the disc. Every change I of the know, disc, but I that's that like sense. twelve. Yeah. It's like twelve hours. Mm-hmm. It's literally like a minute short of twelve hours. That's okay. One of your friends can open for us, and we can still be there when they close. There you go. Oh my goodness, that's so. Oh, I've done it before, <laughs> but it's different doing it at like home. While we did it in the dorms, it's mm-hmm. different when you're just sitting in the dorms and can pause it whenever you want. It's not that much longer than The Godfather. Three hours it's, longer. It's actually, yeah, it is. It's not, okay, when yeah, you're talking is. about the difference between ten and a half hours, or sorry, ten hours, and twelve hours, or thirteen hours, or whatever. Oh, yeah, it is almost ten hours. I keep thinking nine. It's nine hours in like hours 40 away. minutes. Yeah. So it's basically a whole movie longer. Fair. And they're pa- they are paced faster than the godfather i would say they more, absolutely I would say, are. I would say the return of the king is much more engaging than the godfather part three yeah. yes even yeah. maybe the godfather part two it's, it's hard because we didn't watch the theatrical cut of the godfather part two it's recently fair. so we don't it's understand fair. where those cuts are or remember because i've seen it but i don't remember where the cuts are but yeah that return of the king for me this is you hit the Battle of Pelennor Fields, and it's just nonstop to the end, and I it's, love it. I love it's it. just it. Oh, I never <sighs> finished telling you. So yeah, my experience oh, yeah. with the the original five endings, no, not the extended ones, anything like yeah. that. I didn't. I I saw all three of the movies before I read the books. Um. So when we got to that end, I didn't understand that there was a need for them to be that way because of the way that the books are Mm. because all five of those endings are in the book in different ways a little bit but there's more to them and so i was just having to pee at the end of (laughs) at the end of the theatrical period i was like come on come on Come on. Is this not going to be the end? No. Is this like for the longest time, for the longest time, I was like, I would have been okay if it just would have ended with Sam and Frodo <laughs> on that rock. And all my friends would be like, but then you're just doing a disservice to all the fans. I'm like, I don't really care. <laughs> Screw the fans. Yeah, I don't like that ending. <laughs> not that it's bad. I just, it's like, no, I want more than that. Well, you it, made me sit through 10 hours of movie <laughs> and they're just going to sit on a rock. I'm also a good, I think probably because I'm a good, I'm, I, I like set up better. I'm okay with an open end. Just I don't mind an open, ending, open just, end. Just not th- this. This is way, there's way too much uh, uh, investment to it, for it to end there. I don't know. Cause that, I, I, I don't I, uh, think that way anymore. But for the longest time, I did think that way. I, I, I actually. Uh, actually, for the longest time, I enjoyed the Frodo Sam story better than the other half of it. Now I think I'm kind of more 50/50 going the other way. <laughs> I've always been a fan of the other side of the story cuz the Frodo Sam's like you're in the middle of the battle of Pelennor Fields and then we cut to Frodo and Sam going up the stairs. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. It's just like, it's, oh. It's just yeah. It's oh, we're back. And the and the charge of the Rohirrim, which is my favorite moment in the entire Fantastic. thing. And then we cut to the spike. Is that is that it is not this day. Yeah. Yep. That charge is so it's good. Still, didn't they have to invent a technology for that? They to do invented the eating of the horses. They invented a technology for fellowship. I can't remember. They I can't remember if they invented it or they, it was like a thing developed by like Pixar or someone. I know that Mulan. What they, is it called? It always, they always talk about it in the Mulan VHS, like they invented it for Mulan. Is it like the, the copying pasting of like what the is the new? Standing? I don't yeah. Know. It, yeah. What it does is it it copies people into an army and mm-hmm. uses uses the the program has them all fight each other automatically if you set what side they're on i'm looking up what it's called there's a specific name for it because yeah that's that's it's just crazy yeah this jake you're right this really was like a turning point for movies this time like it was the technology that came out the i'm gonna go back to and just the way that they just the way you know i mean they built minas tirith i mean not obviously Minas Tirith, but... <laughs> but oh, built- talk about the miniatures. You always 
talk highly of it, like I do. Too, just saying, the miniature, the use of miniatures oh. in these movies. How no one. Well, does I don't know anymore. how much of a mini- how ma- like how much miniature work was done in Fellowship, but like at least in like Battle of Helm's Deep, like oh, they built that. Like you watch some of the behind the scenes, they built that thing into a ravine, and like you could go into it, and like like it. it, it as I say that this is the last great movie trilogy, this is also <laughs> the last great set of real films before um, computer and visual effects, I feel like, took a hold of everything. And that's not to say computer visual effects are bad. It's just Artists different... work very hard and are very, very good at what they do. There's just something... And I don't mean to sound too Christopher Nolan y either. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be out here You gotta blow up bombs a, for real exp, ex, exposing people to radiation and all that crap. <laughs> um, but like there's just something that this needed to be mostly real. But you wanna know in order to have the success that it had. You wanna know what just baffles me even more about like the building of the sets and that kind of stuff? They built all the sets they, for that and they filmed all three movies at once. I can't imagine. What did Peter Jackson make before this? What did Peter? What has Peter Jackson made after this? But like the I lovely s- bones. I say that because was that after? it was. Mm-hmm. How the hell did this get greenlit? It shouldn't have. This is like that's such a risk to take. That's I, so much money to pour into something see, that I, you don't even know how it's going to turn out. I sort of think though that like, that's it's a, insane. It's one of those it. things where it's like it's like Life of Pi. You know, Life of Pi is been around for a long time and people always say you can't make a movie out of that that's going to be impossible Mm -hmm. and ang lee found a way to do it ang lee found a way it's like it's one of my favorite you know what i'll tell you after we get done with this um (laughs) cliffhanger (laughs) like and i think that probably ang lee used this as a selling point if they can figure out how to tell that story we can figure out how to tell this story and like that's it. That's an that's a an example of the animation for that. Like the, the, oh. the work that they did. It's it's beautiful. It's mind blowing, honestly. Yeah, because yeah, I just and and this is beautiful yeah. too. Yeah, another example. Dune. Dune. No one could make yeah. that for a long time, yeah. and it. I mean, way. they tried. They did try, and I'm sure it. I, and and I don't now, think it did very well at the box office when it no. first came out. There's no way. And the only way it's worked now is by splitting it in half. And when you have a visionary. Like filmmaker like Denis Villeneuve, like that. He is that probably helps. a director of a generation. Oh, one thousand percent. I stand by. He's one of the, if not the best working director right now. The name of the program that I finally found is called Massive. <laughs> it's literally what's called. It's a so it, it's a fitting name. It generates the armies and then they fight each other automatically by setting what side they are on. That's so crazy. To your point about Villeneuve, I think we're at a point where we're starting to see. A bunch of the old great directors. We're, we're at like a shift in the generation, I think. Mm-hmm. Where you're, because I I don't know how old Villa knew. Villa knew, yeah. I think he's probably like in his fifties. Something that. like that, yeah. yeah. He's been making movies for like almost twenty years. Oh yeah. But it just takes a while to get yeah. as big as he is now. One of the saddest things I've ever heard is recently Scorsese said something about like like Kurosawa. Said near the end of his life, I think while he's making like Ron or something, like, I have so many stories to tell, but it's too late. And I was like, and Marty said, I didn't understand him then. Now I do. Mm-hmm. There's so much I want to say, but there's just no time. I go, that is so sad. That's, yeah. That the man's like 80 I was gonna say, he's and getting chill. close. And it's like, he's finally he making really these. 80? He's got to yeah. be closer oh, he's, he's over. There, yeah. And now he's at this point where he can make anything he wants. They're they giving just, him these massive budgets to make the movies as long as he wants. Killers and, of the Flower Moon. Yeah. I don't know what time when this episode is going to come out, if that came out yet or not. October is when yeah. this is coming up. Oh, but, okay. But so, the point the point being, yeah. He, he can do anything he wants, but there's probably now he's getting flooded with all these ideas and just, there's no time. Mm-hmm. And th- that, that made me so sad when I heard it, that. It makes me sad, but that makes me excited to see. Obviously, I don't know how much more that man can make. But, yeah. like, if anything else comes out out of all of his amazing ideas, you know it's going to be good. And I, and I just think as he gets older, and I mean, just as people just, just generally get older, like they just have a better perspective on things. They just understand 
They just come There's to know themselves not more. Not so much angst in what they make. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I wonder when the angst, angst is bad. It's just a perspective. I wonder when the angst is going to leave us, Anderson film. <laughs> I don't know. This new one is less angst and more just nihilism. It's very not. Ni- yeah. We say new. It's months ago at this point. Yeah. I don't know. The color grading looks fantastic. It did look beautiful. It's great. Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. Yeah. Peter Jackson, man. This like. Has he even done much after this? So I, I, obviously he did The Hobbit. Yeah. Well, or King Kong lovely- followed Lord of the Rings. That, two years oh, later, and that right, was a, that was a big success. And yeah. people love that movie. I've never seen it. I, I like s- it. It uh, uh, a friend of mine. She, it's like her second favorite movie of all time. Oh, nice. Maybe first. Like she loves it. And I I watched it a year or two ago. I had never seen it in full, and I told her it's it's good. There's just the big thing is I think I think if they cut it down a little bit because it's over three hours long, it's nice. like. Maybe if you cut this down to like eighty minutes. Oh wait, they already did that in the thirties. Uh, <laughs> you just generally prefer, yeah, older movies. But it, but it is regardless. true. You watch the thirties one, and it's like, yeah, this is a story that only needs to get told in about 80, 90 minutes. I don't. And I, then because the in the original they're they're on a boat heading to Skull Island. Mm-hmm. See, it's like gonna, it's like ten minutes. In the Jackson version, it's an hour. I was gonna say my heart kind of belongs to. The most recent Skull Island movie, Kong. Yeah, it's a fun. That's a yeah, fun that was movie. fun. I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. That's the best in the Brie monster Larson verse. And uh, Sam Jackson is isn't nope. Sam Jackson in it? Oh, well, he might be. I can't remember. Hiddleston. Yeah, yeah that's it. Hiddleston's in it too. Yeah, that was fun. And then Jackson did the Lovely Bones, and then the Hobbit trilogy. Did um, he do District Nine, or was that Neil Blomkamp? That's, that's Blomp, Neil Blomkamp. Yeah. He he produced it. Then he made one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. Yeah, is, it is. They shall not oh, grow old. I never, I never had a chance. I you watched it's, so it's so good. Wait, did he make it, or I thought he just cut together? No, he, he, he made directed it. it. Okay, for some reason I thought he recut together or re just did stuff. Too. Well, he colorized, but still he turned it into a documentary. Okay, for some reason I thought it already was. One. It's, it's like one of the most interesting documentaries yeah, I've ever seen. They they colorized it correctly because. If you watch like uh, History Channel stuff, they just slap on color. One of the things he brings up in the f- in a featurette we saw is grass in like World War Two in HD for like that show. Mm-hmm. They just make grass green, and he said that's not it, grass is all sorts of different kinds of greens and yellows and browns. Mm-hmm. And so for this, it's like, hey, no one's seen this World War One footage Kinda in like high. And so they like they change the frame rate, they they you know improve things. They added sound. Some of it. Yeah, and they also. They figure they, out what they were saying based on uh, rip, lip, li- lip, reading. rip leading. And I think that rip, rip leading. leading. <laughs> lip reading. One of the, I think that makes sense because, especially based off of like stuff for Lord of the Rings, he is a very technical filmmaker. Like yeah. he, like he gets those like. Yeah, he's like the type of person that doesn't want to do something unless he has actually feeling like he's accomplishing something for the betterment of his craft mm-hmm. or to further or yeah, and preserve he, history. I he guess. dives deep into it too, because he did the most recent thing he did is get back. The Beatles doc series. Oh, I liked that. I that thought cool. he was I first that somehow was. tied to Pacific Rim. That's Del the Toro. That's Del Toro. Yeah. That's Guillermo Del Toro. The first one? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which, Del Toro, if we're speaking of The Hobbit, Del Toro's Hobbit he would have been better. To, yeah. I mean, kind of like how Ant-Man would have been better if I grew right. Well, also, The Hobbit was... I don't know if this happened when Peter Jackson picked it up. Was it always meant to be split into three movies? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they was, announced what, it as so two. The Jackson thing? It, it's so much more complicated than that. Ah, that's, I would yeah. recommend watching the Lindsay Ellis videos there. They, they, they lay it out perfect. It basically comes down to a bunch of politics and union stuff to why the movies were already greenlit and they'd already started pre-production. So when Del Toro dropped off the project, they had to keep going. And mm. they would. The, the studio said they would not... They would shut it down unless Jackson picked it up. So instead of three years of pre-production like he had for Lord of the Rings, he had like four months. And then they made it into three movies, and he was changing stuff on the fly. And if you watch the appendices for the Hobbit movies, he even says at one point, like, it's a shot of him like sitting on the set just kind of like dead inside. He goes, just, there are some days I'd show up and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And it's like, I feel for him. He cares, and he wants this to be good, 
but because of how it goes down, its over-reliance on technology is what helps get them made, and that's why Middle-Earth looks different and worse, because that's just how it was made. And you wonder if there's more time, or if Del Toro stays on there, and if it's two movies instead of three, because mm-hmm. it structurally doesn't work as well, because then the third movie is bare bones, and they yes. added stuff from the Silmarillion and Unfinished Tales, and then you know, they added a new character that they did in reshoots. She wasn't there for principal photography. They added That's her. That's crazy. It's like there's so much going on that, that 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 it's it's such an interesting behind the scenes thing that it makes you wish the movies were better. And there are parts of the movies I, I like. Wonder if Martin the Freeman is. Oh, Martin so better. Freeman is fan. Like I almost feel. Can you guys remind me who plays Bilbo in the? Uh, I'm it's sorry, Ian did Holm. you say Morgan Freeman? No, Martin I don't. Freeman. I, I was asking. He said Martin Freeman. Martin, okay, I thought yeah. he said Morgan Freeman. No, that would, who, who who plays Bilbo? Ah. That would be a very different Bilbo. <laughs> who plays Bilbo in um Ian Holm? Ian Holm, thank you. I I, I love Rest Ian Holm and he does a great job in this. But now because of how good Freeman was in the Hobbit movies, I think of him. I, I don't. I, I forget Ian yeah. Holm. It's it's perfect casting. That's that's it. The turning, turning back to the Lord of the Rings, perfect casting. Oh my god! Perfect. Yeah. And that's the other th- uh, kind of tying back to what you said about like the pre-production stuff. There's that's why I think it turned out so good because they spent so much time. There are so many people in this too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I just especially when you cuz you, you you mentioned that they had 3 years of pre-production for this or something like that, yeah. You can tell. Like just cuz like it when you plan it out that much how do you going make, to turn how do you out make out a better. movie like this without? Oh yeah, well, three absolutely. movies, three movies, three oh. years of pre-production makes sense at the same oh, yeah. time, and to have them come out one year apart from each it other. Does, it does make me wonder. Like I'm sure they say this in a behind-the-scenes sort of thing, but like, did they like shoot scenes for the Fellowship and then the next day shoot things for the Return of the Game? Because that's a good. They were in the I same would, place. I'd like to see that shot list and shooting schedule. That sound, it's that, gotta that be. Hurts my it's head. gotta be. They have everything laid out. For all the locations, and they just have to kind of shoot everything there at once. In which, in which case, you're jumping heads movie. off to the actors for able to be able to jump what is basically a different character in yeah. Frodo in the first movie versus Frodo in the third movie. That's a good point. That's such a different mindset. Like, how would... God, that, that hurts my head. Just to even imagine having to do that. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah and then just... The, the, <laughs> how complicated it is and how much they shot and there's still stuff not in the extended <laughs> yeah like they film scenes of Arwen fighting at Helm's Deep and that's really? not a thing you'd put in the extended because they changed it they're like no this isn't working we can't have her and Aragorn be with each other at this point because we want to feel the the distance between them yep those were the parts of the movies that because I watched these for the first time in like 2005 so I was in, like, fifth grade. Mm-hmm. My dad's like, okay, we're going to watch these, the theatrical ones. And we'd watch a chunk of each. I think it took us about a week to watch through all three or something. And every time it cut to our one story in the second and third one, he, he'd he be like, I don't <laughs> like this part. I'm like, why? It's boring. Because <laughs> he wants to get to the battle stuff. Yeah. But it was just funny. He's like, Ugh, the soap opera stuff, he called call it. <laughs> soap opera stuff. <laughs> yeah, but one of those scenes, the one where she sees her son mm. in the second one. Oh, he's the Flight of the Concords guy. Yeah, yeah. The, Drew didn't even know that. Yeah, the one of the Flight of the Concords guy, not Jermaine, the other one, Brett McKenzie, oh. is the one who who's like talk, who tells her something, she breaks her out of her little trance. Oh, I think that's cool. Yeah, it's just a little cameo, and the fans name like Figwit or something like that. Huh. So he looks very different. Than the play of the Concords look. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, just I don't know what else to say about these the, movies. I mean, what else can be said about these movies? They're like the music, it, we it's haven't really perfect. talked about the music, but it's fantastic. Oh I just watched a video. Can't remember the YouTuber. It's a big one for music, and it was like within the last few weeks. Funny how the YouTube algorithm can give me all these Lord of the Rings videos that have a lot of views and came out in the last like two weeks. Because, you know... It's almost like your phone can hear you talking. Yeah, but, like, how, <laughs> how all these big videos come out in the last few weeks, whereas we watched this two months ago. Mm. Why those videos aren't out. Because one of them is this guy. It's a million, couple million subs, and it's like, here's, hey, here's how Howard Shore created all these different 
themes for oh, different things. And it just goes to say that the interest in these movies, the love for these movies, just it never fades away. No. This is it's gonna be we talked about it's gonna be passed down for generations and more generations. This is like such a teachable thing to if you're if you love movies, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, to just watch this and understand how they made it and everything behind it because it's it's a masterclass. What are you looking for? Making sure I said his name right. Howard Shore? <laughs> no. Brett McKenzie's character. <laughs> Figwit, yeah. Okay. Because that's the thing. Yeah, the, the, the stinking Shire song. Well, th- that will that will ingrain itself in your head is and that, will not leave. Is that just a... da 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 That's not it. No. <laughs> like that. Yeah. And this guy brought up how there's a point where they leave Rivendell where they use the same theme from the Shire, and it's a little more ominous, and I don't know all the theory, but he says they use a certain chord in there that's different. And then it like it's playing over their walking, and then there's a big cymbal roll into that shot of them walking by, and it's the first time you hear the fellowship theme. Like it transitions from the Shire theme to the Fellowship oh, theme, and they're t- t- walking the past step, the rock. Yep. yep, and it goes. And he was talking about. I go, that is really good. And then so good. The other thing he talked about was like the the theme for Rohan used in like he's like they use mostly the same part to evoke different emotions like they're going up to Edores and you know like when the flag rips off mm-hmm. like because Theoden's under Saruman's the, da, 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 thing no do, 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 yeah. do, and it's like mm-hmm. it's more of like kind of a solemn feel and then you have it later when he when he gets out of the trance picks up his sword and it's a little more triumphant and you have like the low brass playing it instead of just a lone fiddle and then when you play it during the the charge of the Rohirrim in the third movie it's a lot louder it's like it's you're using the same thing basically for different effects and using different instruments you to make it bigger being cuz i got to imagine if they being made Howard Shore them... i wish <laughs> Me too. Oh my God. I Howard, it. you want to switch lives? You yeah, want to be a loser? Please. You're saying Jake? <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine having to write all three of those back to back to back? Oh, he probably just wrote the whole thing in one yeah. big I thing. Think, so yeah. it's basically three movies worth of music. Also, I wonder what the music count is. Like, what is the total time of music in the extended movies? It's oh. got to be like three or four hours oh, of music. Yeah. Also, don't forget the... I cut. also wonder what the... With like the not cut down version because you know it's cut down for the movie to go with the specific scene whatever. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like he's got to have written a, like a full piece for it. And don't forget the classic, the the Urukai, the um, bum bum bum, like the oh my da, god, da da da, yeah, bum 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 bum. I will like I was literally bum, bum, bum. I was going on a run the other day and I had that playing and I was like oh nerd. let's go look at the nerd like I was like man and I just was. Moving. Sorry, I was getting loud. You were there. running as if the whips of your master were behind you. <laughs> exactly. They're running. I had. To, I was saying that to myself for like ten minutes. They're running with the whips of the master behind. Them. Like so, he says it so fast. I they run like, as if the whips running, of the master was behind, behind them. them. It's like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. oh. Or uh, what? Is, what is it? A red sun rises. Blood has been spilled this night. night. And then of course the the kick everyone talks about. Eric oh Arnold. yeah! Oh my! Like Breaking everyone that act when he. <laughs> yeah, like everyone knows that fun <laughs> fact now. And every time you watch it, you just laugh. But the thing that made me and one of my cousins laugh talk about is the way Gimli like pulls out one of the charred belts. And goes, what are their wee belts? <laughs> he's still laughing. I don't know why. It's just a funny. Line. I, I laughed at the noise that the belt makes when the orc takes it from him, picks it up, and. <laughs> It's just a or, weird noise. Or Gimli. How'd you like gets to be the person bit... that folded this entire project? Oh my god, so many footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> or the scene of Gimli there in Fangorn in the second one. He gets he takes the blood off the leaf goes <laughs> Oh blood. Yes. <laughs> That's one of the weird things I don't know why they uh, the the whole bit where uh, Mary drinks the oil looking stuff. Oh, yeah. Is it Mary or is it Pippin? It's Mary. He's like feigning sickness. So they give him something to drink and it chokes him. It looks like oil. I thought it was blood. It looked gross. And they're laughing. And Pippin I'm says sure something. I'm the books and, say and, what it is. Yeah, and Mary goes, fooled you too, didn't I? I'm like, 
what was the point of that? (laughs) Or uh, I want to talk about the one scene that they added into the two towers that I don't understand. I mean, I understand it, but I think it's unnecessary. Um, Where they're sitting waist deep in the water. Merry and Pippin. Before oh, they go yeah. into the cellar. After, after they've taken down Saruman. Okay. They and say they, something that's relevant, and then they go into the cellar, and it's like, okay. It shows them getting the long bottom leaf. Yeah. And then, oh, like, tell yeah, him. Yeah, it yeah, might yeah, be yeah. a relative. It might be a relative. And they're laughing at Treebeard. It's like this weird, like, mostly animated thing. You can tell it was added later. Because he, like, walks up and goes, <laughs> and looks down, and it's like. Again, it's another thing that was in the book that, (laughs) I mean, it doesn't add anything. Yeah. I'm sure it did in the book, but not in the movie. It just slows down the pace. (laughs) We are sitting on a field of victory, enjoying a well... I can't even finish it. Just... uh, That one's in the theatrical cut, though. We are sitting on a field of victory, enjoying a well-earned smoke. (laughs) Or something. (laughs) I'm pretty sure it's smoke. Well, earned. what is it? It's not smoke. smoke. Google it. Yep. Oh, we are sitting. <laughs> we are sitting. Well earned. Field fight. of victory. It might have been. Yeah. Enjoying a few well earned comforts. Well the earned. salted pork is particularly, particularly good. good. Salted pork. <laughs> Kimley is so funny. Well, that I was for, another thing. I we forgot how about. funny he was. He's great. They, he is one of my. Th- Favorite He's parts. my Jared of this movie. <laughs> That's my dad's favorite character. And I was telling Jake, like, I'm watching the second, third movies. They do kind of turn him into a joke. Like, he's not a joke in that first one. He just kind of like becomes it works. The, I, yeah. know. I like, got like, 43. That's what I, I was got about to... 44. I was oh, yeah? literally about His to arm was that. twitching. Yes, he's because he's got my <laughs> ox and his nervous system. <laughs> That's no, not in the theatrical. Their, their, no, bro- their, their bromance is one of my absolute favorites. Toss I will... me. Toss me. Don't <laughs> tell the elf. Come, come to toss me. <laughs> Funny enough, I think John Reese davies is the tallest person in the Fellowship. And he has to probably. Play. He probably I think, is. I, I think I read he's like 6'1", 6'2". He's taller than everyone else who's, who, the, of the cast in the Fellowship. That but he's got to be one of the shortest ones. Yeah. That is another thing that... I'm again talking about the two towers. This is another thing that they added that I am so glad that they added for the extent, and I don't know why they cut from the. We we were talking about it earlier, um, that moment where they first discover that Gandalf is alive again, mm-hmm. and um, is he? They're looking out over the forest, and he goes somewhere in the wilderness. Frodo now carries all of our hopes, or something. Yep. And mm-hmm. Aragorn says Frodo is not alone. And Gandalf looks at him like, what? He goes, Sam's with him. And he gets a smile on his face. And he, and he says, goes, yeah. oh, that's good. good. That's and not I, in the theatrical. It's crazy. He, yeah. It makes Gandalf feel so much less cold than he does in the theatrical. Yeah, it's a nice moment of, like, Gandalf. It's like, it's a slow moment of Gandalf, like, just, it's like uncertainty. And then when Aragorn says Sam's with him, it's like this inner warmth to him of hope. <laughs> and it's like. He's doing exactly what Gandalf told him just to stick by him. And that's the other thing, speaking of Gandalf, is like if ha, if people have never read the books or knew what happened in that first movie, Fellowship Comes, and you see him die, I would be fr- like, I would be like, what the heck? He was like my favorite part. Like, I would have been, oh my God. Yeah, Ian McKellen got nominated for the first movie. He did get nominated. That's awesome. Oh, he's so good Did anybody good else this. get nominated for any of the rest of them? Nope. That's, that's, the only a, one. that's a real shame. Yeah, it's an ensemble piece to a T. But yeah, so Turn of the King got best v- picture, did, right? Did, did Vigo, oh, oh, it got a lot. Did Vigo? Did Vigo get nominated for anything? Not, not no. for these. No, he has three other nominations. For some reason, I Didn't he get he did. nominated for Green Book? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Green Book, Captain Green Fantastic, Book? and Eastern Promises. Which, in Eastern Promises, you can see his Fellowship tattoo. Oh, really? Because he's covered in tattoos. That's awesome. You see a lot more than his tattoos in that scene. <laughs> you see everything in that scene. I wouldn't mind. Looking he kills at, a bunch of guys uh, completely naked. Well, I mean, naked. you know, looking at him. I mean, like, and listen, you see him completely when, naked in Captain Fantastic, too. And, like, I was, well, like, it's funny because I was watching this and I was texting Sam at the same time. And I was like, she, she's never obviously seen this movie. But I was she's saying, She's like, never seen The Fellowship? She's never seen any of them. 
And she doesn't have what? Well, she, she just doesn't have an an interest in high fantasy movies. What? Lame, Sam. <laughs> Sam. But Sam. Because well, I was look who you're dating. I was watching this. I'm just like, man, yeah, you're he, missing out. He on... jogs to the Urukai theme. Well, I was gonna say you're missing out on Young Viggo Mortensen. He is hot. The locks. The did eyes. You, did, did you spell it H A W T? Oh yeah, H-A-W-T. oh yeah, he's hot. <laughs> just hot. that man is fine. Just saying. You're doing good, Vigo. You're doing good. Where is that? Oh, there it is. I was going to read off the the Oscar wins and nominations for these Let's three. Go. I think it's the most nominated trilogy of all time. It, it, yeah, it's I think it's like yeah. 30. 100%. Oh, my goodness. So Fellowship won cinematography, makeup, score, and visual effects, and it was also nominated for picture, directed, adapted screenplay, supporting actor for Ian McKellen, art direction, costume design, film editing, original song, and sound mixing. And then Two Towers was also Best Picture nominee, but also nominated for Art Direction, Film Editing, and Sound Mixing. It won Sound Editing and Visual Effects. And then Return of the King went 11 for 11. It won for Picture, Director, Adapted Screenplay, Art Direction, Costume Design, Film Editing, Makeup, Original Score, Original Song for Into the West, and uh, Sound Mixing and Visual Effects. It is is tied with Titanic and Ben-Hur for the most Oscar wins, and it has the best... Win uh, the best win percentage with that many because Titanic was like eleven for fourteen, and Ben Hur was eleven for twelve, I believe. And I think Titanic's fourteen nominations are tied with La La Land for the most. That sounds I think. about right. So just some Oscar it's... information there. So Lord of the Rings, I think as a trilogy, has the most wins and nominations of any trilogy. Yeah. Good for them. So, and then The Hobbit, all three got nominated, but I think they were nominated for a total of like six. And didn't win any something like that. Yeah, it's not surprising. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh wait, are, are you telling me that Benedict Cumberbatch got a nomination for crawling around on the ground? That f- the footage of him recording Snogs. It's so great. Is, where I he's loved he's it like so on much. that he's, like, what, he's on like a mattress. It looks <laughs> like a giant pet and goes, <laughs> and he's like. 400% into it and I make the eyes and it's like it makes me so happy he's respect it. respect <laughs> I, I love him <laughs> he's fantastic I know your favorite movie with him is you know what I'm gonna say Ropeback Mountain oh <laughs> <laughs> no but you see a whole no, lot of no, him no, in that movie no but <laughs> you saw his butt yeah, no, so I, I definitely no but on that one <laughs> uh, no but <laughs> Maybe one day I'll rewatch. It's been such a long, t- long time since I've seen it. Even if it wasn't a very good joke, I like how Dickie laughs to make me feel better. <laughs> He's not doing it to make me feel better. No, I laugh easily. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> that, no. That's all I have yeah, to say that's, about that's... that. <laughs> Probably my favorite of his movies is no one is going to like to hear this. It's either Imitation Game or Into Darkness. Or, or, oh, Interesting I, take. I was, was going to say. I really like it. I, like, what, I don't it, even the fifth care estate? that it's a remake of the Wrath of Khan. I just don't even care. Well, the worst part. Not it's go, good. Not, not, not to go down a rabbit hole. The worst part is that the, the filmmakers didn't own up to it being that. They're like, oh, no. It's not the Wrath of Khan. It's not. Yeah, yeah. It is. Just own it, and then people like it more. He's in Atonement. He's, That's right. He horrible person yeah he's disgusting Ugh. yeah he's also in 12 years a slave which yeah he is. Also he's also a, a disgusting person, person. Yeah. yeah you own that movie don't you mm-hmm. how many movie. times have you watched it since you bought it <laughs> i didn't buy it how many yeah. times are you planning on watching it i'll see it again it's a good movie it's a well made movie Oh, it's a great movie. Yeah, it's not, not a movie you sit in the... No. I'm going to watch 12 <laughs> Years a Slave. Like, oh, it's a Friday night. Golly oh, gee. I'm going to see Let's Michael pop some Bass popcorn. Bender let's watch some people. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right after this, let's watch Schindler's List. Oh, let's watch <laughs> Come and See. Let's... You Dude, know. I would more readily watch, watch Schindler's Sound. List than... <laughs> 12 Years Slave. Yeah. It was brutal. <laughs> They're all brutal. They're, They're both, just I don't know. They are both very brutal. Emotionally taxing. Yeah, let's let's top yeah. it off with silence. <laughs> <laughs> Just emotionally taxing long movies. Is that is the name of that the silence? No, it's or just silence. silence. Okay. Oh. Anyway, back to the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thank I'm, you, I'm, <laughs> Hammy, for making us watch those. Yes, because they're both <sighs> fantastic. <laughs> wow, that's true. 
<laughs> you never. Recover. I don't know that I'll ever recover. <laughs> anyway, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to mention about I think, Jake's I think eighth I, favorite movie of all time? I think I got everything. And what? What else do you say? It's yeah. We've we've covered it all. It's perfect. Well, as much as we could. As much as we could. If you guys had Believe time to watch all three, we could. might have more to say. I think we could go. We could go. Down I mean, this we've been going hole for, for an hour and a half now, so. Yeah, I was like, we could go keep doing going down this rabbit hole easily. I mean, we could probably talk continually talk about this for as long as a movie watching one movie of it is. That's so. a very good point. It's a very good point. But yeah, if you liked us talking about this and you want to see more, Jake, what is your next favorite movie? Hold on, I gotta pull it up. <laughs> Your number seven pick. Um, I think, time. I think, I believe it to be The Secret Life of Walter Dude. Mitty, the new one. Um, oh, was there an old one? With Ben Stiller, yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, let me double check that. Uh, oh, real quick, I forgot All About Eve had 14 nominations, too. I just remembered, and I had to Google it to make sure. Yes, it yeah. is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty from 2013. Mm. All right, so yeah, please go watch that movie. Tune back in in a week, and we're going to talk about that. But in, in the meantime, you should check out our social media page. Jared, where can they good people find us online? You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And you can listen to us on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Spotify, iHeartRadio. If it's YouTube and you're watching us, hey, like, subscribe, ring our bell, comment. Make sure you rate and comment on all those apps and the, or whatever they're called. And go to our groovy website. Absolutely. Another way just to watch or listen to us. So thank you again for listening to today's epic installment of Fellowship of the Ring. And like I said, watch Walter Mitty for next week. We're going to be talking about that. It's going to be a lot of good stuff working our way through Jake's top ten. So once again, thank you. We will see you guys next time.